Here's to happiness, freedom, and life. Yeah! May your travel be swift as a sight cut through the grass. In a studio on New York's 42nd Street, the cast of the new musical, The Great Comet of 1812, rehearses for opening night. 24 members of this production will soon be making their Broadway debuts. All the things I could have been, but I never had the nerve. Life. Including the leading man, Josh Groban. So, all right, all right, I've had my time. Close my eyes, let the death bells chime. This is something you've wanted for a long time. Yeah, it was my childhood dream. Is this how I die? Was there ever any other way my life could be? For weeks now, the 35-year-old singer has been putting in grueling 12-hour days to get ready. Is it harder work than you thought it would be? I'm a professional worrier, so it is as hard as I thought it would be. <laughs> but I know you're not afraid to work hard. No, but I'm also, I have, I have an excellent work ethic and also I worry. So I think maybe the two are, are related. I'm ready. Directing Groban and the cast is Rachel Chavkin. I really dig into that. There's a lot of anticipation yeah, 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 out there about this show. Do you feel it? I feel it. Yeah, I'm I feel anticipating it. <laughs> I feel it. We're in a bubble I'm a little bit. I'm dreaming about it you know. every night. And then he ducks. Chavkin will also be making her Broadway debut. High stakes for everybody here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. High stakes, really... but, but excitement. I think it, it just reminds me of, you know, when I was in high school. If I were a rich that was the last time Groban was in a musical, at age 17, playing a skinny Tevya in Fiddler on the Roof while a senior at the Los Angeles County High School for the Arts. I wouldn't have to work hard. Groban went on to the elite musical theater program at Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh, where his small class included Josh Gad, who'd play Olaf in Frozen. Katie Mixon, who'd play Melissa McCarthy's sister in the sitcom Mike and Molly, and the Tony-winning Leslie Odom Jr., who'd star in Hamilton. So many of my favorite now on Broadway actors and TV actors were in my class of 13. Uh, but at the end of his first semester, Groban dropped out when Warner Brothers offered him a record deal. His debut album, released in 2001, would sell nearly 7 million copies. His second album, nearly 8 million, the baby-faced baritone, who the New York Times called our national choir boy, was a sensation who defied genre or trend. You said you don't really fit in musically. Yeah, I felt that pretty early in my music career. Has there been a price for that? My award shelf is barren. I feel like sometimes, especially earlier in my career, the way I was written about seemed very dismissive. How did you feel about that? It was discouraging when you already feel like that kind of kid growing up in mm -hmm. elementary school and junior high. I was not ever in the clique. You know, I was never yeah. the kid invited to the parties. The psychology of it, of course, is just that, you know, you go into this big professional world and you're the kid not invited to the party again, you know? Right. But the thing that pushed me through that was that my fans were there for me from moment one. And they appear to be following him to Broadway. Even before its official opening, The Great Comet has been selling out in previews, earning more than a million dollars in its first week. I imagine you've had Broadway offers before. Mm -hmm. And you turned them down. I, yeah, for a number of reasons. Uh, timing is everything. And the other thing is there may be a brilliant show that's been around for a really long time, mm -hmm. and they're looking for the 34th whoever in it. And you don't want to be the 34th and whoever. And <laughs> the child me says I grew up wanting to do that. Yeah. But I think the adult me says I wanted to bring something new. And I'm so ready. Groban plays Pierre in Natasha Pierre and the Great Comet of 1812, the musical's full title which is adapted from a love story within Tolstoy's War and Peace. Director Rachel Chavkin has transformed the Imperial Theater into Imperial Russia. So the audience is gonna be back here? The audience is everywhere. Taking out 200 seats to extend the stage 
and create an intimate supper club yeah. for 1,200 right. guests. So the cast literally ends up on the stage, in the audience, up in the balcony, everywhere. Yeah, I mean, it would probably be as proper to say there is no stage. When this show was first put on, you had an audience of what, about 80 people? 87. Well, shall we give it a go? Yeah, let's do it. The Great Comet has come a long way from the tiny Ars Nova Theater, where the show was conceived four years ago. Groban saw an early production and reached out when he heard it was headed to Broadway. But for me, the comet brings no fear. Last year, he began working with Chavkin and Dave Malloy, the musical's composer and creator. Sound pretty good. <laughs> Uh, yeah, let me know when you want me to back off a little bit. I think on this one, I don't think there's any back okay. off, right? What brought you to War and Peace? I read it. <laughs> <laughs> I read it, and it turns out it's pretty good. <laughs> Casting Groban meant he had to learn the accordion, so he bought one. I came into the store like I had sucker written all over my face. I'm just like, <laughs> hi, um, listen, I know this is going to be a real pain in the butt, but I have a lot of money and I've never played before, and I need an instrument because I'm doing this Broadway show. <laughs> he named it Olga. Oh, oh, girl. Girl. <laughs> and took it on tour with him this summer to train. <laughs> You'd be playing the accordion backstage to learn how to play? The accordion that I walk out with at the top of the show, that I play throughout the show, that accordion has been to New Zealand, it has been to <laughs> South Africa, it has been to Australia. That accordion has been on my back for the last year, uh -huh. learning these songs. Or I didn't want to be thrown. I didn't want to come in because I knew there'd be some head scratching. I knew there'd be a little bit of skepticism. Skepticism about? Broadway is no stranger to stunt casting. Yeah. And I'm coming from another world. And I wanted to make sure that it was known right off the bat that I was coming to this world with the maximum amount of respect for it. On the first night of previews this month, after a lifetime of dreaming, Josh Groban finally was ready for his Broadway entrance. What do you remember about that moment? It was more emotional for me than I thought it would be. I was trying to be really calm and collected and professional and thinking, I got, you know, this is our first preview. I got a job to do. Let's go do this. You think about the moments, you know, you didn't know if you could do it. You think about all the people that discouraged you, you know, all the people that encouraged you, the teachers. And then you just have to perform. And then you have to just do it. Yeah. One of our dressers on the show, I had her take my iPhone. I said, please just videotape my first steps out to the stage. I'll never forget it. If I'm ever having a bad day, I'll just, I'll play that. I'll play that, yeah. <laughs> 